Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark and welcome to my studio. Now, what I've got for you lovely lot today. Well, we're going to have a go at this beautiful little winter landscape. Now, the good thing about painting snow scenes is that it gives you the opportunity of leaving lots of lovely white paper. And this one's got a little bit of a personal story to it as well. So come and join me and we'll paint this step by step together. So here is the finished picture and the plan today is to paint a vignette style painting with all the edges disappearing to white. Now I don't usually put my focal point bang in the middle but I think in this case it works. Okay so for today's materials my paper is some Saunders Waterford, it's 100% cotton, rough texture, it's on a block so it won't need stretching but as always any decent watercolour paper will do. And my colours today are yellow ochre, French ultramarine, but you could use some cobalt blue, burnt sienna, Payne's grey, and just a touch of sap green. Four brushes from my range, three quarter inch flat, number 12 and number six round, and my trusty number three rigger. Okay, so here is the drawing. Now it's not too difficult if you want to give it a go, but for this one, there is a drawing template free to download from my website, link in the description below. Off we go. Now I'm wetting all the area above the building, carefully going around the roof. And this flat brush is perfect for this. So for these distant trees, there are far too many mixes to list them all. But for my greens, I'm mixing a real dull and subtle looking green using yellow ochre and French ultramarine, but also adding in a touch of sap green if needed. But I'm also adding in some gray tones with some Payne's gray and some warmer tones with some burnt sienna. So starting with a French ultramarine, nice loose tree shapes, still using my flat brush and letting all those colours mix and blend on the paper. And here for some shadows in the snow, just some French ultramarine. And just dropping in here a little touch of Payne's Grey. Mm -hmm. 
So for the rest of these banks, these are just simply mixes of the same four colors that I'll be using throughout the rest of this tutorial. And here I'm using the sharpened end of my brush to score in these foliage details. So, let me tell you a little bit about this public house, or pub, as all Brits will call their local. Now, it's called the Snowdrop Inn, but doesn't really exist, as it's all part of my imagination. In fact, it's inspired by a recurring dream that I have. Now, what happens is that I break down in my car in the middle of nowhere. For some reason, it's usually an old Morris Minor or something similar. Now, it's either pouring with rain or snowing hard and have to walk for miles in the cold. Now clearly this is before the times of mobile phones. Anyway, I eventually come across a lovely country pub and I'm welcomed in by a friendly barmaid, sat down by a roaring fire and fed a tasty shepherd's pie. Now the pub does seem to change from dream to dream, but this is a typical one. I'm also dropping in clean water so I get a combination of soft and blurry as well as hard edges. Here just a little splattering with some burnt sienna. Now this was going to be a church over here in the distance, but the paper is still very wet, so I think I'll just turn this into a few more distant pine trees. Next for the pub, and I'm using some yellow ochre with just a touch of burnt sienna and painting the complete building. Now this goldy colour is very reminiscent of the stone houses that you'll find in the Cotswolds in central England. So maybe I broke down somewhere near Sirencester. Right, so now we need to let this totally dry so it's a perfect time for a short break and a glass of snow yeah, dropping best bitter. Because if the pub's made up, then so is the beer. Now for the shadow side. And this is a mix of yellow ochre and burnt sienna with just a tiny touch of French ultramarine dropped in. Light source is coming from the left, so all the right hand side needs to have the shadow.
Here I'm dropping in to the wet a little Payne's Grey. And this is just to suggest a little bit of snow which has slid off the roof. Now for these trees. And this is a mix of burnt sienna and French ultramarine and I'm using my number 12 brush here, and I'm trying to paint these trunks with as few brush strokes as possible. Here, just adding in a touch of Payne's Grey. Switching over now to my smaller number six brush. And with these brush strokes, trying to do a little flick and lift the brush off the paper to get those lovely tapered ends. Now it's trusty rigger time. The perfect brush for these spindly branches. It's springy and just seems to go where it wants.
Again, with these windows, one stroke if you can. Don't try to square them up or they'll just look too contrived. and a light touch and watery mix for the suggestion of these stones. Less is more, your eye will just simply fill in the rest. Now with some watery burnt sienna, I'm giving all the windows a shadow side. Now for the pub sign. Now any colour you like, but I think blue is complementary with the rest of the painting. And let's have some matching doors. Now for the sign writing. Now I'm not going to try and spell out the snowdrop, just a few squiggles will do. And perhaps a little menu board. Today's specials, shepherd's pie. Payne's grey again for these details. Next, my usual technique of softening and blending a few hard edges with a damp piece of tissue. Okay, so a good thing about totally making up a scene is you can add as you go along. So I can see a little bridge of a stream here. So back with that lovely Cotswold golden color and then Payne's Grey again for the arch.
Now for those final touches with some gooey gouache straight from the tube. Looking at it next morning with fresh eyes, I feel that this big tree here looks a bit stark and contrasty. Is that a word? So, with my number 12 brush, flat to the paper, I'm using the gold colour again and getting in some dry brush texture to give the impression of lots of twiggy bits and old leaf or bird's nest. Just clutter here. of course splatting in a few bits of random texture. Now here is a decision I'll leave up to you. The painting works fine without any falling snow but if you want to add to it I'm just using a milky consistency of white gouache and just carefully splatting in the snow. Now, always good to test it on some scrap paper first. And just one final uncomfortable bit here. The sign happens to be resting on the top of the fence, so we need to just move it down a tad. Now, we really are finished, and perhaps that will make a nice Christmas card. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. Just relax, enjoy the experience, make it your own, and most important of all, have fun. And again, I'd like to thank everybody who's left a tip in the tip jar, really is appreciated. Please don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already, it is free. Leave a comment, I do read every single one, although I can't always reply to all of them. And of course, I look forward to seeing you all again next week for another Watercolour Wednesday. So, take care everyone. Bye for now.